This is Kim Hammer, pastor of Slain Baptist Church in the community of Tall Outside Bent with your devotion taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 beginning with verse 15. We're in the middle of a song that God is impressing upon the heart of Moses to write down and then has given him the instruction to teach that song to the nation of Israel, all of this occurring in the same day. We find that when we take a look at this song that the first 14 verses are for the most part pretty positive, reminding the nation of Israel how that God had blessed them, that God had not abandoned them, that God had fulfilled his promise to them and that he said he would bring them to a promised land. And now they had already begun to occupy that promised land and they were about to cross over Jordan. And God wanted to remind them that it was because of his goodness that they were where they were. In the middle of the first 14 verses, though, you find an inclination that refers to a time where the nation of Israel would turn their back upon God and begin to worship other idols just as their forefathers had done. And God wanted to reference that point in order to show them that there would be a time that he would bless them with prosperity and that they needed to guard against the temptation of taking that prosperity and using it as an opportunity to turn away from God and begin to worship the gods of this world, including the God of prosperity. And so in verse 15, we find that he begins to address that matter. We find that there is a price associated with prosperity, that if we do not control prosperity as God has blessed us with it, that prosperity will control us and it will actually turn us to be an individual that might worship that prosperity more than the God who made us prosperous. And God wanted to warn the nation of Israel and guard and tell them to guard themselves against becoming that people that would find themselves in that position. He tells us some of the warning signs in verses 15 through 18, where it is that prosperity becomes our God, or we begin to turn away from God because of our prosperous condition, is that we will become a people who are well satisfied to the point that we will be self-sufficient and that we think we can function independent from the God who gave us the prosperity in the first place. The second thing he tells us in these verses is that they will abandon the God who blessed them, that they will go away from him and they will abandon him as far as becoming dependent upon him. The third thing he tells them is that they would reject being submissive to the one who saved them, that they would become a God of their own and they no longer needed the God who made them prosperous. In the specific case, as far as the nation of Israel, he says that you will provoke God by worshiping other gods who led you astray, that they would worship demons with their sacrifices, that they would worship gods that not only they had never known, but that their fathers had never known. In other words, it would be a new generation that would create a new set of gods that they would worship unlike their fathers had ever seen before. It would become a more perverse generation. And we find that whenever it is that people fall into prosperity and they begin to worship prosperity more than God, that they are never satisfied and that they always need to find something more to entertain them and it'll take them further away from God and deeper into their own depravity in order to find satisfaction that they can't find because it is absent of God in their life. We find also that it tells us that they would desert the God who never deserted them and that they would forget the God who did not forget them in the wilderness. And that's what verse 15 through 19 tells is that's a price that comes with prosperity. And in that moment, God tells them that he would bring them low. The apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter four and verse 12 said this, he said, I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And in other words, he had found the ability to be content in spite of the circumstances. But he also expressed that he knew what it was like to be on the mountain, but he knew what it was like to be brought down into the valley. And God is telling the nation of Israel in the psalm that he is teaching to Moses to teach to them that in their time of prosperity, they need to be careful because not only did God bring them up to the moment of prosperity, but he could also bring them down if in that time they turned their back on him. And as a result of that, God tells them what he was gonna to do to the nation of Israel. And this pattern holds true for us today. And we can learn from the example of the nation of Israel. He tells us in these verses that he would reject them and that he would hide their face from them. And that whenever it was that they fell into despair, that God would be waiting there because he knew that that time would come. And in that moment, he would acknowledge and he would bring them to realize that they were a generation that was perverse, that they were a generation that was unfaithful, and they were a generation who was provoking the anger of God. The Bible says, and there is a principle that is taught, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. 
we find that the nation of Israel was going to fall into the hands of an angry God, and he was angry because the nation of Israel had provoked him to become angry because they had turned their back on him after he had brought them to a place of prosperity. Sound familiar to you? As we take a look at what the Bible says, the Lord will bring them to a point of destruction and a consuming fire will fall upon them. The Bible says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by a fire and the earth and everything done it will be laid bare. Second Peter chapter three and verse 10. There's a time coming when God is gonna call this world into accountability and he's gonna call each one of us individually before him for accountability. And if God has blessed us with prosperity, God is gonna call us into account for how we handled those times of prosperity in our life and whether or not we turn them into a God or whether we use those as an opportunity to praise God and to worship him for the blessings that he has given us.